Welcome to the deep dive. Yeah. You know where we try to cut through the noise and get to what matters. Today we're diving into uh, the world of virtualization, specifically Proxmox. If you're running VMs, you know the deal. It's this constant resource balancing act, right? Juggling CPU, RAM, storage, trying to keep everything running smooth. But there's this thing people are talking about, kind of a secret weapon maybe, mm -hmm. right back caching. And the big question is, how can you use it to make your VMs feel, you know, snappier without just hammering your CPUs or overloading the whole system? So our mission today, let's break down what's really going on with right back caching in Proxmox, clear up some uh, confusion maybe, and show you how to actually get the most from it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you're going to have some, well, some aha moments here, this feature. It's definitely misunderstood sometimes. But once you get how it works, um, it really can unlock a surprising amount of speed. We'll bust some myths today too. Okay, let's get into it then. Right back caching. What is it exactly? And why is it getting called this uh, hidden gem in mm -hmm. the Proxmox community? Right. So it's actually pretty simple in concept, which is kind of elegant. When you enable write back for a VM's disk, okay, the writes, they don't go straight to your physical hard drive or SSD. Instead, Proxmox holds them in the host system's RAM first, like a little buffer. Then later on, it flushes that data down to the actual disk. Now, from the VM's point of view, it thinks the write is done the second it hits that RAM buffer. Ah, okay, so instant confirmation for the VM. Exactly. That's where the snappy feeling comes from. It feels fast because, like, someone online put it perfectly, the host RAM is doing all the work. Think of it. like. The host RAM is a super fast receptionist taking a message. The VM hands off the message, gets told, got it, and moves on. The receptionist deals with filing it properly later. That makes sense. So the host is acting as this uh, high-speed middleman. It grabs the right, tells the VM, all good, instantly, even though the data right. hasn't actually like settled out of the physical storage yet. Precisely. You got it. And this little trick. It's super useful for certain kinds of VMs. Think about database VMs, constantly reading, writing, small bits of data maybe, or um, file servers that see a lot of I.O. action. Really, any app where the disk speed feels like the bottleneck, that's where you might see a real benefit. Okay, that sounds fantastic for performance, almost. Too right. good. My immediate thought, you know, always watching those resource meters is, what's the hidden cost here? Yeah. Is this speed boost secretly stealing CPU cycles from my VM? Right, that's a really common concern. And here's the good news, enabling write back doesn't hijack your VM's assigned CPU threads. That's like a critical point. A lot of confusion stems from this. All the caching magic, it happens outside the virtual machine. On the Proxmox host itself, the disk IO is emulated by the host you see, so your VM's vCPUs. They aren't burdened with managing this cache buffer. You could have, say, a little two-core VM. It can still get the full speed benefit without choking on some hidden background caching task. Wow. Okay. So the VM gets a free ride, CPU-wise. Yeah. That's that's actually a pretty big deal. But wait. If it's not the VM's CPU, is it eating into the VM's assigned RAM instead, or are we still talking host resources? Nah, well, the performance win is free for the VM, CPU-wise, like you said. But yeah. there's always a but, right? It's not free overall. While the VM's CPU is spared, the host's CPU and the host's RAM, they take the hit. The host needs CPU cycles to manage that RAM buffer and then more cycles to actually flush the data to disk later. And if your Proxmox host itself is already running pretty hot, maybe overloaded, well, flushing that cache data might get delayed. So host health definitely matters. And to your other question, nope, it uses the host's RAM for that temporary holding space. Okay, host RAM, not the VM's RAM allocation. Yeah. Exactly. It doesn't touch your VM's RAM quota at all. That's another neat part of the design, the guest OS inside the VM. It just sees crazy fast write speeds, but it's really the host playing the role of like a smart caching controller behind the scenes using its own memory. Okay, so connecting this, while write back is great for speed, there is a critical well, a gotcha, that RAM cache. It isn't persistent, it's volatile memory. Meaning. Meaning if your Proxmox host suddenly loses power, anything still sitting in that RAM buffer, anything that hasn't been flushed to the physical disk yet, poof, it's oh, gone. Right, data loss. Exactly. Which leads to the crucial question you have to ask yourself. Do you have a UPS, an uninterruptible power supply on that host machine? Because if the power goes out. Yeah. No UPS pretty much equals a significant risk of data loss if you're using writeback. That's the absolute core trade-off here. Speed versus safety. Yeah, that's a huge factor, a really critical one. So power loss is the main danger. What about 
what if the VM itself is super busy, like its own CPU is maxed out running its applications? Does that slow down the right back flushing process? Could that cause issues? Mm -hmm. Not directly, no. Remember the flushing, the writing from host RAM to disk? That happens on the host side, managed by the host's resources. So a busy VM CPU won't really bottleneck that specific operation. However, there's a small nuance. Initiating the right inside the VM in the first place. That does take a tiny bit of VM CPU effort mm -hmm. just to kick off the IO request. And this can be slightly more noticeable if you're using Cow2 disk images. The flexible ones. Right, the ones that can grow and have snapshots. They tend to need a little more CPU for IO processing compared to uh, raw disk images. Raw being just direct block access. Yeah. So using raw format disks can sometimes slightly reduce even that small VM side CPU overhead for initiating writes. But the main caching work, still all host. This actually paints a really interesting picture. It's like Proxmox with write back turned on sort of transforms itself. It becomes like a, a caching RAID controller, but just for your VMs. That's a great way to put it, actually, yeah. Proxmox cues those writes up in its RAM, handles the I.O. complexities on its own schedule. It completely abstracts all that disk interaction away from the VM. The VM doesn't need to know or care how slow the underlying physical disk might actually be for that write operation. And the setup, like we touched on, is really helpful in specific spots. Read small VMs, maybe just one or two vCPUs, right back lets them punch above their weight on I.O. Or maybe you're trying to squeeze more performance out of older hardware without a big upgrade. This can help. Speeding up workloads without needing more guest resources directly. It's like you're leveraging the host's power more intelligently. Exactly. You're letting the host act as this performance smoothing layer. And honestly, it does a pretty decent job most of the time. So, okay. If you're listening and thinking, all right, this sounds pretty good. Maybe I should try it. Hmm. Let's talk practical tips before you just flip that switch in the Proxmox GUI. Good idea. What should people keep in mind? First off, monitor your host. <laughs> Seriously. Watch the Proxmox graphs for CPU and RAM usage on the host system. Or use external tools, you know, like Zabbix, Grafana, whatever you prefer. Look for bottlenecks there, because that's where the caching work happens. Right, because an overloaded host won't cache effectively. Exactly. Second, and we hammered this already, but it's crucial. Protect your data. Get a UPS, a reliable one. Test it. Remember, data in that RAM cache vanishes instantly if the power cuts out. No UPSs. Well, it's playing with fire for anything important. Non-negotiable for critical stuff, basically. <laughs> Pretty much. Third, storage speed still matters. Writeback works best with fast storage like SSDs or NVMe drives. It'll still give a boost to slower spinning hard drives, don't get me wrong, but the difference won't be quite as dramatic. Faster underlying disk means faster flushing of the cache. Makes sense. And fourth, benchmark. Don't just guess. Before you turn it on, run a disk benchmark inside your VM. Tools like Fio on Linux or a uh, Crystal Disk Mark on Windows are great. Run the benchmark, then enable right back, then run it again. See the actual difference for your workload. Quantify the gains. Okay, so let's boil this down. The big takeaway here seems pretty clear, doesn't it? Right back caching. Yeah, it's your friend for that instant VM speed boost. Feels great, but it comes with that one major trade-off. Data safety during power loss, which means a UPS isn't just recommended. It's practically mandatory if the data matters. No UPS. Probably stick to safer caching modes where anything critical. That's the core insight, right? Absolutely. And zooming out just a bit for those really critical systems where losing even a single transaction is unacceptable. That's where the default right through caching might still be the smarter bet. It's slower, sure, because every write has to hit the physical disk before the VM gets the OK. But it's safer. Guaranteed durability. Exactly. So it really depends on your priorities for that specific VM. Pure speed or rock solid data integrity. And, you know, looking ahead, Proxmox is constantly evolving. Storage tech is getting faster, too. NVMe drives are common now. Persistent memory is starting to appear. Things like that could make right back caching even more effective or perhaps change the trade-offs a bit in the future. It's an interesting space to watch. Yeah, it really is. I remember wrestling with a sluggish database on a tiny VM years ago, thinking I needed a whole new server rack. <laughs> it sounds like right back might have been exactly that, uh, that secret weapon I needed back then. And when it works right, which it often does, with the UPS caveat, it almost feels like you're cheating the system <laughs> in a good way, you know. Right back caching in Proxmox. It really is one of those, like, rare tweaks. Gives you a nice performance kick with surprisingly little downside. If your host isn't already gasping for air and if you've got that power protect and sorted, your VMs don't take the CPU hit, your applications feel snappier, your overall setup can be more efficient. It's just clever. So here's something to chew on as we wrap up. 
What system or process, maybe even in your own life, could benefit from a smart, subtle optimization like this? Something that feels a bit like cheating, but is really just smarter design. And when you look at your own tech, your own digital systems, what do you really value more? Raw breakneck speed or absolute guaranteed durability? Something to think about.